Good morning, everybody. It's Chris from the Kerke at Blue Rhino Safaris. Uh, happy 2020 to everybody. If I haven't seen you yet, I uh, hope you have a great one. And uh, I hope we all have success in this year. I want to quickly discuss an alteration that I made to one of my tours, uh, my Botswana Blitz. Um, I took the catering out because catering doesn't seem to be a very big thing amongst my guests. Uh, they're quite comfortable to do my trips without the catering. Most of you guys that have been out with me know exactly how we do it. And it's an easy way, I believe, not to spend time behind a stove cooking all night long. So the way we do it on our trips are quick and easy. My last gorilla trip proved it um, out of eight vehicles that went on the gorilla trip for a month. I think we had a braai one night and I saw people uh, spending time only during Christmas Day for long sessions of cooking. So we don't believe in, in big cooking uh, expeditions. We want to keep it easy, keep it healthy and enjoy the trip rather than focus on cooking too much. So let's start with um, Mother Earth. We all live on this planet and uh, enjoy the, the scenery that we, that we have around us, nature and everything else that we do have um, in our, on our planet. But if we look at, at Africa, there's a few recognizable um, spots on Africa itself. Uh, Lake Victoria, which we just visited with the gorillas. Uh, then you have Lake Tanganyika that we went through to, Lake Malawi that we visited. And then if you come to Southern Africa, you can see the Namib Desert on the side there. Um, what else can you see? Here's the Central African Rainforest right here over the Congo. Uh, you have the Sahara right at the top. But if you focus down in Botswana, you can see two distinct features down there. The first one is the Okavango Delta. It looks like a chicken foot on the left top corner. The second one is the Makhadi Khadi Pans which uh, sits right there um, on the side as well and those two features are part of my trip for 2020 in in um, july so let's go through the plan quickly and um, just take you through the basics so we leave on the 13th of january uh, july which means we are in the middle of the winter in the middle of the water season and the vic falls and everything should get water the Miramis water should be high and I've stretched it from seven nights to eight nights because what changed from the old blitz where we came down from um, the Moremi uh, on this trip we will head north and go through Savuti and through Chobi and then onto the Vic Falls for those interested and then I will head back down again. So I leave you at Kasane and you can spend a few more days there if you want to. I will help you with all your arrangements. You can visit the falls, you can go back to the park for another day, or you can just get head back home as, as you feel. So departure date 13 July, off-road caravans and trailers welcome. Please, please bring them along if you have them. This is a, a nice, enjoyable holiday tour. Yes, we are driving through sand, but I'll be there. I've got my recovery kit and everything is there and we won't get stuck that easily. And if we do, it's not a big issue. We'll just get out again. It's what I do for a living. Um, the price 9,700 per person sharing. Uh, one of the reasons that it's a little bit high is that we are in the parks for uh, four days that we have to pay park fees in Botswana, uh, which makes it a little bit more expensive. So other than that, uh, a fairly well priced tour. It's not a very long tour. Uh, restaurants are available, so you don't have to fuss about food. We stop in mind for groceries. So really not a not a very big issue um, in that regard. So an easy tour, if you've never done a trip before, this is a good one to start with. If you've done a hundred trips before, this is a great one to do because it's always nice to visit the area. This picture is Savuti. Uh, on the left, you'll see the hills. On the right hand side, there's a baobab. If you go past there, you'll recognize the baobab. So this is the Savuti area. It was uh, during the rainy season. We are trying to go out in the, um, in the dry season. So I call it south to north, uh, Botswana, Trans-Botswana, I called it in the past. It is one of my favorite routes, well, one of my guests' favorite routes, and I've done this trip many times. I've stopped counting how many times I've done it. It really is just a good trip. The itinerary is on there. You can have a look at the itinerary, but let's go through the basics quickly. We basically start in the south of, 
of Botswana at Sorowi and we go to Kamarano Sanctuary for our first night. Kamarano is also quite legendary. I have a choice of another campsite which is cheaper but I'd prefer to stay here and give you the rhino uh, experience as well. We chat about the rhinos and we, what is rumored and what is, what is real. Um, so I, I'll give you some information on, on rhinos and themselves um, when we are there. It is one of the only places that you can see rhino in, um, in Botswana. The other place that you can see them is in the Maremi itself where we might see them. From there we go up to Kubo Island. Kubo Island is also legendary. The granite copies, the baobabs, lovely to spend a night there. Uh, we drive across the pans to Chapman's baobab. Chapman's have been reportedly fallen over. It didn't really, it sort of split, fell over. Some pieces are alive, some pieces are dead. Uh, but you can have a look for yourself what the baobab does through its cycle of life. So we stop there for, for uh, lunch or coffee stop and then on to Maun. In Maun we sleep for a night which gives us the opportunity to do some uh, scenic flights and also to go out for dinner that night. Lovely restaurant in, um, in Maun so we can enjoy a, a bit of a restaurant meal. The next day at about 10 we leave, get to camp at about lunch and then in the afternoon we go for the afternoon game drive in a private concession area. Uh, we're allowed to get out and discuss things and um, just have a look around. There's a Pride of Lions called the Santawani Pride, uh, also the Trini Pride, and also the Kazagini Pride. There's a few different Prides of Lions in that area, so we'll see which ones of those we can find. A uh, good time for elephant viewing as well in the Delta with the water getting a bit more scarce. We'll spend three nights at that campsite. On the second day we go into the Maremi, we do a boat ride, uh, which is included in the price. So we go out for the day on the Delta and I show you what the Delta looks like in, in the winter with the water. With a bit of luck, some Sitatunga, maybe a few elephants in the water, hippo, and then back out to camp again. And then the last day we will very likely go back into the Maremi and do the Black Bulls area and in the south, which is also quite nice. Uh, we'll see if we find the Cleany Pride up in Cleany area and um, then back again. So three nights in the Okavango Delta area. Then from there we will move through Savuti, legendary Savuti, the biggest elephants in the world genetically. Uh, so you can't find bigger elephants than you'll find in Savuti. We stop in Savuti for lunch uh, near the Savuti uh, pools area and if we have a bit of time maybe for an hour go for a game drive and then head further north until we get to our camp for the night. Brilliant camp overlooking the Lignanti Plains, lovely sunset, birds flying past. It's really an awesome place to sit on the deck and just have a gin and tonic or, or a cold drink. The next morning we go back into the Chobi National Park and we do the river section. We follow the Chobi River all the way through to Kasani and uh, it's one of the best drives in Africa and we do that for the day. We get to, to camp in the afternoon, depending on what people want to do. If they want to do boat rides, we need to get back like about 3 o'clock in the afternoon so that they can get on the boats for the sunset cruise. Um, it's not a long day, so we can structure it in a way that makes sense for us so that we can get back in time for the boat ride. Then we have our last night there. And um, the next morning I'm finished, I head back to Joburg. And, uh, but you guys are right there. Big Falls is around the corner. They do day trips from Kasane. So I help you with your day trip planning for the next day. If you want to spend an extra night there, it's easy to do. It's straightforward to get back from there uh, into South Africa. So I'll help you with your planning to get back home or to visit uh, the falls, any of those things. So you have an option of just spending a, a bit of a, a day or two relaxing and doing your own thing while you are in Kasane. And um, I'll definitely assist you with everything that you need. As I say, they do day trips from Kasane to Vic Falls. You just need a passport. You leave your vehicle in camp and you travel across the border and you uh, visit Vic Falls for the day. The falls should be at its peak, which means really good sightings uh, for the falls. So if you've never seen the falls, it's worth doing it in July. 
when you are done you can get back home again um, otherwise if you don't want to do any of that and you need to get back the tour is designed to be only eight nights so you can get back rather quickly as well i go through vic falls on many occasions so most of my tours will go around vic falls at some point uh, so if you join any of my other tours you will have the opportunity for vic falls at the later stage as well and that is about it uh, if you have any questions please let me know and i will make sure to answer them i would suggest uh, booking quite quickly i have the um, the old build show in february at gallagher estate coming up in the next month and i also have the getaway show in cape town coming up in the next uh, month so make sure that you uh, book for this trip uh, even before the shows i'm pretty sure at the shows they will fill up so any questions let me know otherwise make your booking do it as soon as possible and uh, let's go and enjoy what Botswana has to offer cheers